first. Yeah, uh, uh, go ahead and repeat that. I guess we got cut off. You're the first one in football. I was the first so one in football. Mindy was the first one, but I'm the first one in football. Yeah, well, I know. I remember watching the NBA and CBS. I wonder how many of these people in this room would really remember that. Yeah. So when you talk about that concept, you know, and Mindy started, did you ever draw any ideas of what Mindy had done or... Uh, I never had any idea. I mean, when I decided that I wanted to leave the league at age 60, um, I never had any idea that this would present itself. Right. And um, obviously it hadn't been done on football, but it was uh, David Hill and the people at Fox that thought they could do something with the officiating element. And so uh, it was their idea, and now it's been 10 years, and every network has one. And, and I, I do think it's good because I think that Fans, you know, fans to me deserve to know the rules and the interpretations, and so that's what that's what basically our role is. Now I know that the uh, NFL uses the All Star officials, so please, uh, once the well, let's not call them All Star. Okay, then let find uh, the, you know, I don't know what do you want to call mixed, them then? Mixed crews. Okay, mixed crews. Do you feel that uh, they should have the of fishing and crews that are the best year uh, all year, or, or the uh, mixed cr crews. I, I feel, I, I feel, without a doubt, that it should be the best crew. Right. Um, I, listen, I, I and and I was not popular with the officials when I said this and when I did it. But to me, I don't, I don't care about the best officials. I care about the best officiating. Right. And to me, officiating is a team concept. Right. With seven officials is and the replay guy. Hard to say. And, um, and, and you know, the two teams that are playing on Sunday are the best teams. Right. And they're playing with the same guys that they played with through 16 weeks. Right. Obviously, with injuries, it's a little bit different. But to me, I, I want... I want a crew, quite frankly, I want a crew that's been together all year, that knows their strengths, knows their weaknesses, and um, and I did it for three years in a row, and one official got three straight Super Bowls, not because he was the best side judge, but because he ended up being on the best crew. Maybe he added to that element of those crews, and uh, so we did it for three years with a couple of exceptions, and then the officials didn't like it, and we went back to a mixed Mixed. When you look at the instant replays, you talk about college versus pros. Do you think the uh, which one do you like better? Well, I like the NFL. Um, I, I think it controls the number of stops, and um, and I like the fact that the coaches are invested. Um, so I, I always worried about the college game, although they've done a pretty good job. I mean, you and but we've had games with five, six, seven stoppages in uh, in college, and. And uh, that four replay guys in charge of the game for 60 minutes, right? Not basically like it is in the NFL. The last two minutes of the second quarter and the fourth quarter, with the exception, of course, the scoring plays and turnovers. So I, I, I like the NFL's better. Now, now I know as an official, uh, you know, I've often wondered: Do you think a 16 or 17 game schedule uh, would do anything? Uh, to reduce injuries, or what are your thoughts about the uh, possibility of expansion there? I mean, it's not that's not my expertise. Right. I mean, I don't. I mean, certainly, we're all as officials. You're concerned about the injuries, and right. because you have to enforce the rules that are put in. Right. So, 16, 17 games from an official, they'll be happy to have. I mean, they are, honestly. They'd be happy to have another regular season game and one less preseason game because you don't get a lot out of it. But right. also, you can't eliminate the preseason from an officiating standpoint. You only have four games to get yourself prepared, you know, for the season. So if I'd hate to think that an official would go into the regular season with only one preseason game. So I, I think three would be, to me, the minimum. But I, they'd welcome the pressure of an extra regular season game. Kyle Shanahan is kind of making the rounds of him alerting the official before the play. Hey, watch, Kittle's going to get held on this. Right. How often does that happen? And how often is that lobbying actually really surprising? Well, I mean, it happens a lot. I mean, you know, the coach will always say, hey, 74 is holding. You got to watch 74. He's holding on every play. Or, or watch 92. He lines up offside every play. His helmet is in the neutral zone. So they, they, do, they do a lot of officiating now. That being said, I've never seen it done to such detail as Kyle did. 
I mean, he described the route. He described exactly what was going to happen, and and it happened just as he said. And then the official throws the flag, and so everybody goes, "Oh my God!" He talked the official into making that call. Well, not only he threw it, but so did the back judge. You know, there were two flags on the play, and it was so obvious. But that's the nature of the beast. You notice that the 49ers have already said publicly, publicly, that the Chiefs have been called for the most defensive holding penalties this year, with, I think, 21. So it's like planting the seed. I mean, officials, I'm just telling you, they're sports fans. So we always say, ah, they don't read the paper. The hell they don't. They read the papers. And so, you know, you look at it and you hear that stuff. And that's why I never, I never said to an official in my 10 years of, of running the program, I never said to them, hey, you know, you want to watch number 74 because he's had 13 holding calls on him already. Because if you do say something like that to officials, the tendency is the guys watching him, our boss said he hold. Oh, there's a little slight guy. Boom! You better call it. So you don't you don't want to put presets in officials' mind because you can overreact. But you know, it's the game that's played within the game. And it's not just coaches, it's players that do the same thing. And you know, when you get to this level you pretty much learn that it goes in this one and out this one just about as fast. And I used to tell coaches all the time, if you have a concern about a team, don't tell the officials 90, 90 minutes before the game when they come in to see you because they won't do a thing. Call me. Call me in the office. I'll look at it. And if I feel you're justified, then, you know, then, then I will call them. But it is a game that's played. Mike, were there any specific officials through the years that you had more respect for uh, I know the NFL's had a great track record with a lot of great officials that you patterned yourself or looked upon as a way to go help uh, doing what you were doing to make well, it well. Listen, I learned a lot. You know, I learned a lot from Jerry Seaman, who hired me, um, and I was only on the field for two years, uh, and then went in the office. Maybe I was so bad, as they thought in Buffalo, I was so bad they had to uh, create a job for me on the field, <laughs> and uh, they had to create a job for me in the office. Um, just kidding, that was because Scott's there. Right. But um, when I went into the office, I relied a lot on the Red Cashins and the right. Jerry Mark Rice right. and those referees that uh, that were really to me the signature referees in the game that were still around Jim Tunney um, those guys meant the world to me and um, and I and I I think as you look back you know there's so many great officials but you don't know them right I mean they're they're down judges, they're side judges. The only ones you really know are the referees. And, and so, and they're the most important person on the field because they project the confidence or the lack of confidence that people have in the crew. Um, so, you know, I, I look back at, I mean, I look back at those traditional greats, those referees. And, I, there's one other thing I want to ask you. I know at the beginning of the conversation, I asked you about Manny Rudolph, and I know you're a rules analyst. However, w w would there ever be a time that you'd like to be the color guy along with the analyst, or is that something that you'd like no. to stay away from? No, I, I don't I don't want to go with single high safeties and cover two. <laughs> I, I, just, I just want to figure out what a catch is. I want to figure out what pass interference is, right. and I have my hands full with that. So no, I leave those to the to the people that played the game. See, I think in some ways it's like now with Joe and Troy, um, their expertise is not an officiating. Right. So they don't want to comment on whether they think something's a catch or not. You know, now they want somebody that's done it that understands it to a degree and let them comment on it. So I'd be way out of my league. Thank you. Yes. Two questions.